Hey guys, Jeff Poole here with Shutter Magazine and today I'm going to talk to you about storytelling weddings. In the article, we talked about three types of photographers and how they approach the wedding day. We talked about the epic shot photographer, uh, that photographer that's always going out looking for that really big, dramatic, epic shot, um, and how sometimes we see when we're working with photographers that they may excel at creating those epic shot type of photos, but when you look at an entire story of a wedding, sometimes they fail at capturing details or really being able to catch those real moments on the fly. Just conversely from that, we talk about the Pinterest style photographer who is really great at capturing those romantic, soft and airy type of photos and the details, but it's almost formulaic in how they do it. And then right down the middle, we talk about the photojournalistic type of photographer who is a fly on the wall, just capturing things as they happen throughout the day, but there's not really a structure in how they go about photographing the day. And so what I want to talk to you guys about is approaching a wedding from a storytelling standpoint and thinking about all the stories and sub stories throughout the day and how we can better tell those in order to bring more referrals and more sales into our business. And so part of what I want to do today is walk you through a couple of wedding albums and talk to, talk to you about my mindset when I approach a wedding day. Now, a lot of times when I approach a wedding day, I approach it with the story in mind. And so instead of going in and saying, I'm going to photograph bride prep, in my mind, I know that bride prep is uh, uh, made up of several sub stories. And so when I go in, I'm going to think, I'm going to photograph all the bride's details. And then I'm going to photograph hair and makeup. Then I'm going to photograph bride getting into her gown. Then I'm going to photograph bride alone. Then I'm going to photograph bride with her bridesmaids. And so when you approach a wedding in that type of way, it really makes you being able to tell that story a whole lot better because now you're focusing on your couple and exactly what their story is. And being able to communicate what's important to them is, is really crucial to being able to walk in on a wedding day and tell their story from uh, beginning to end in a consistent manner. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to open up uh, my browser here. We're going to walk through a wedding album or two and I'm going to just kind of tell you my uh, thought process when walking through um, and photographing these weddings. So stay tuned and uh, I hope you enjoy the albums. Okay guys, um, here I have a wedding album from Rachel and Neil's wedding queued up and I just want to walk you through the uh, design of the album and talk a little bit about how when I went into this wedding I knew exactly what I was shooting for and so I shot with the album in mind throughout the entire day and I think once you see it kind of all come together you'll understand what I'm talking about. Um, so one thing that I want to do is obviously you know this where it comes into the epic style of photography whether that be something that's you know really emotional or whether it's something that is wide angle with a dramatic sky like in the next album that I'm going to show you we always want to start with one of those images that kind of just captures your attention um, and that can capture your attention due to the epic nature of it or to the romantic nature of it but we call it kind of a wow shot and that's what we want to start with and we've um, so what you're looking at here, just to give you kind of an idea, is you're looking at the left and right spread, uh, right pages of the spread of an album. And so um, on the left page we have their names uh, and their monogram logo. Um, right down the middle, um, right about here somewhere, is where this page, this book would actually turn. And then this over here would be the right page. And so even though you're looking at it in spread format, this is a left and a right page. And so for this opening spread, um, we want to really focus on something that, that captures the eye, uh, an image that captures the eye. Um, and, and we shoot for this throughout the day. We want to make sure we get these kind of wow shots. Um, and so this is kind of what we start. And when we're meeting with our clients and going over the design of their album, and even before the wedding, we talk about what stories they want told on their wedding day. And so we build in time for all of the things that you're going to see throughout this album. And so um, the way we are able to sell albums that are sometimes three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 is we start with the timeline. And starting with the timeline and looking through the entire wedding story of the day, we're able to kind of prep them for all of these sub stories. And so when we shoot them 
and we bring them back in for the album sales, it makes it really easy for us to be able to sell those additional album spreads. And so while we're looking at the storyline of the album, I want you to think that you have to really walk into your wedding knowing that you're shooting for the album in order to be able to tell all these stories. And so we start with this one kind of wow image introducing our couple um, as kind of like a scene setter, uh, letting us know who the couple is. From there, we will go into bride's details. Now, we approach photographing uh, the bride's details or the groom's details in a way that is almost commercial in nature because we know that we can use these images in more than just one location. You know, we're not only selling these images to our couples. Um, this dress is a perfect image to be able to give to the dress shop. Um, and I guarantee you, if you provide your dress shop with these images, they're going to use them on their social media and they're going to tag you. And where is the first place that a bride or a groom goes as soon as they get engaged? They start looking at their venue, then they start looking at their attire. And so when they're looking at gowns and tuxes and things like that, uh, they're looking for inspiration. And when your images are out there in the market being shared by um, wedding dress shops and, uh, and clothing sh stores, that's really when you start seeing the referrals come in. And so we want to really approach photographing the bride's details from a commercial standpoint because these images can be used for way more than just the, uh, the wedding album. And so we will flip through and we'll photograph the rings. And the same way we give the images of the dress to the dress shop, we'll give images of the rings to the ring shop if they get them from a local shop. They're going to be able to tag uh, us in those images when they when they um, promote them out on social media. Um, even little custom elements like their box, you know, they had that done at a certain space. Be able to share those images with the company that makes their ring box. Um, they're going to share that out and they're going to give you credit for it. And then we move into bride prep. And bride prep is composed of, you know, hair and makeup. It's composed of getting ready, um, you know, all the special details, images with the bridal party, um, you know, all the different things. And so spreads like this are perfect to share with your hair and makeup artist. Um, because again, if you're sharing and tagging your hair and makeup artist in this, they're going to be promoting this out on social media as well. Uh, so these images, um, we shoot with all of our vendors in mind, just like we shoot with the story in mind. As we go through, we photograph the bride getting into her gown. We photograph a little bit more of a serious style with her. She wanted something a little bit more fashion-esque, a little bit more um, um, 20s kind of era. That was kind of her style for her wedding was more vintage. And so we really want to be able to show all the little details. And this is a, another example of you know where communicating with your couples is really important because we sat down and asked uh, our bride, like, why did you choose the gown that you chose? And she said, I chose it because of all the lacing around the outside. And why did you choose the shoes? And why did you choose the ring? Or, you know, what is important about the ring? And in this case, it was the groom's mother's ring, grandmother's ring that was passed down. And so we really want to highlight all of these stories. When you photograph these details, not only is it helping tell your couple's story, but what bride or groom is not going to want to put this spread in their album? And so that leads to an additional spread that you're selling in your album. And then, of course, all the little sub stories like this shawl was her um, maid of honor shawl. And we wanted to be able to capture the story of her helping her get this shawl. And because this was a winter wedding and it was cold outside. And so it kind of flowed in with that that 20s kind of theme of you know fur and uh, all of the vintage styling. And so we wanted to be able to capture that story. And then, you know, just like any other movie or story that we're watching, if you're watching um, a movie, say, for example, uh, The Bourne Identity or any of the Jason Bourne movies, you know that there's a fight scene in Paris and he gets away. And then all of a sudden, you know, they don't just jump into the scene in Prague. They have this pullback of a cityscape of Prague and it says Prague down in the bottom corner or the top corner. But what that, what that is doing, it's a scene setter letting us know that we are leaving one storyline and we're going into the next. And so when you photograph the details, that is what um, we're doing. We're using those detail spreads to take us from one storyline to the next. And now this is a proof album, you know, it hasn't been retouched. So, you know, things like the lint and the scratches on the table, those will all be removed in post. Uh, this is basically at proof quality so I can show it to my couple and let them make changes um, you know, for image swaps and things like that and, and retouching requests. But, you know, that type of stuff would be, would be removed from the album. But, you know, what I want to get through to you guys is by photographing these details, 
you know, we can then transition from the bride prep part of the day into the groom prep part of the day. And so just the little details, cufflinks and, you know, the whiskey that they're drinking and the bow tie and the, and the, uh, the handkerchief in the pocket, um, the relationship between all the guys just kind of hanging out, drinking beer, having fun. We want to be able to tell that story. And then we want to bring the groom out and photograph the groom alone, just have a little bit of a long time, pull him away from the guys, um, you know, just to kind of get some more GQ-esque shots of the groom. And then we bring in the groom, all the groomsmen, and just let them have some fun, you know. And I said, you know, hey, guys, what I want you to do is just I want you to take um, um, the groom over here, and I just want you to just, you know, bust his balls a little bit, have some fun with them, you know, just you know, get him laughing. And this just happened naturally, you know, like they just started cracking up and telling stories, and I'm photographing the whole time. And so now I've got this kind of reservoir dogs type of look on the left with more of their natural reactions and stuff on the right. And then we move into the first look. And, you know, this is uh, a special moment that I think that, you know, we try to convince all of our couples to do this. Um, we, we, we separate them from all of the wedding party and we bring them together uh, so that the first time they see each other is a special moment between just them. And we're able to document this really kind of like special moment. And all of these images are not staged. They're just candid images, but we're really able to capture those natural reactions. And when you are telling stories like this, and obviously there are, you know, many, many more images than what you see on these two page spreads. But um, what I want you to think about is, is pull it down to the three to five images that best tell that story and put those in the, in, in the album per spread. And so again, you know, focusing all the little things, you know, all the hand, the touch, the emotion, and even just something as, as simple as the way they're holding hands can communicate that emotion that they have during this time of the day. From there, you know, after about 10 or 15 minutes, of course, they're going to look around and go, what do we do now after that first moment of seeing each other? And that's when we go into more creatives. We bring out the wedding party. Um, we do things like um, gift exchanges. We do some more creative portraits with the couple. Um, and then we photograph this example uh, as a great example of a gift exchange, um, telling the story of like the groom opening his gift, the bride opening her gift, and just kind of the, the storyline that's, that's unfolding in front of us. And again, we bring out the wedding party and we photograph some fun stuff with them. Um, all the girls by themselves, all the guys by themselves, um, the entire wedding party. And this couple chose to do some family formals beforehand. So we were able to bring out the family and do just a couple of family formals beforehand. But, you know, basically what we're doing there this time of the day is just more of the traditional style portraits with the couple. And for this shot here, for example, you know, we had a second photographer just kind of capturing stuff off, uh, off access from where the primary shooter was at. But we just want to be able to tell the story of their family. And then we go into another scene set or transition of, you know, where are we going from here? You know, we don't want to jump from family portraits right into the ceremony because that's kind of an abrupt jump. But if we can photograph all the little details that lead into the ceremony, that story now has a smooth transition to let us know where we're going. And again, this is great things to share with your venue. You know, the view, the, the way they set up a small courtyard for a small intimate wedding, uh, all the florals, um, just the little things, the, even the, the, uh, the brewery that uh, they met at provided the beer that they were going to do their toast with. And so I know for, for us, this the brewery actually uses this photo in some of their marketing. And so um, that's just extra marketing that you get for free just by taking the time to photograph all of those little details. And so then we move into the ceremony and um, capture just some kind of candid people hanging around, um, people as guests are being seated. And then we have the bride walking in and obviously, you know, the ring bearer and flower girl. Um, you know, funny moment, this little flower girl just takes off running down the aisle and, you know, I'm sitting there just capturing images at 20 frames a second, just hoping that I get one in focus because she just was terrified and took off and everyone's laughing. So we really want to be able to tell that story and, you know, where she dropped her little flower petals, the, the ring bearer came and, and started picking everything up. And so, you know, all the little things that happen uh, throughout the day are things that the, that the bride and groom or your couple is going to want to remember. And so, um, being able to tell those stories is very important. And then you move into the ceremony itself and we want to be able to capture all the emotion of the day and you know the groom kind of broke down for a minute uh, but we want to be able to, to really show all the little things throughout the day and again three to five images per spread is really good because 
it keeps the images large, makes you be able to see and concentrate on the story and not make it feel like a yearbook. Okay, so a little bit more of the kiss and exit. And one thing that Lori and I do is after um, you know, our couples kiss and they're walking down the aisle, we always tell them to stop at the end of the aisle and kiss uh, because you always get an amazing shot like this with the bubbles or guests looking back smiling. It's always just a really pretty shot uh, and it always makes for a nice two-page pano in an album. After that, uh, when guests go to cocktail hour, we want to build in some creative time where we walk with our couples out onto the docks and create some more um, portraits and, and then we'll, this is where we pull out the lights and we start doing the more wide angle dramatic shots. Um, this image is cropped, but it was full body. Um, the original image was full body and it had a lot more sky in it and everything, but in order to get it onto a two page spread on an album, we had to crop it into a pano. Um, you know, and I think, you know, things like this is where we start pulling out a little bit more of those dramatic images and, you know, that kind of wow shots throughout the day. Again, we move from there into the reception, and we want to be able to show all the details that they have for the reception. And this is great for your rental companies that rent um, all of your lounge furniture, the popcorn machine, the cornhole, where they rent all of the stuff from. This is great marketing materials that you can give to them that they can help you market your business. Um, we, as we move into the ceremony, um, all of the details, we want to make sure we capture every little detail. Because this is things that after the wedding, most of this stuff is going to be boxed up. So if we're not taking photos of it, who is? And so a lot of photographers don't focus on, on capturing these details. Uh, or some photographers are really hung up on capturing the details, but they don't really capture the rest of the day. And so we got to think about the entire day as a set of substories and make sure that we're doing justice to every set of the substory throughout the day. And so a shameless little plug there for the bridal portrait. Um, you know, we definitely want to be able to show that. Um, they actually had a larger metal uh, version of this in their home, but uh, they didn't want to risk bringing it out to the reception. So they, they framed a small 11 by 14 to bring out to the reception to put on the, the welcome table. But again, just like, um, you know, as far as vendor networking, these are great spreads to provide to the baker. Um, great images to provide to the to the baker or whoever is doing all the all the desserts another shameless plug here for the guest signature book um, you know we we put these in these spreads in our albums um, not necessarily because it's it's interesting but it is a detail and just because we created that detail doesn't mean we shouldn't photograph it and put it in their album as well um, and so I know a lot of times when I'm photograph when I'm at wedding shows and I'm flipping through the physical copy of this album and I show this and, and talk to about people about this is what you can do with your engagements. Um, you know, we can build these books and, and have them have these amazing signature books for when their guests are arriving at the wedding. And then we move into our first dances. Um, this couple did a first dance, but I don't think they did uh, both a father and daughter. Uh, father, daughter, uh, mother, son dance. I think they only did one of them. Uh, but we really want to be able to capture, you know, all the emotion that's in the first dance. And then we have the mother-son dance, and we kept it simple for them, just one spread. It wasn't a long, they only did half a song. Um, but then we move into the toast, the cake cutting, and then to open dancing. And now open dancing and details are those times of day where I will put more than three to five images per spread because we're not necessarily looking at each individual image. Um, we're thinking about the entire story. I want people to flip through the album and see this as being a party. So we generally put one to two spreads of just open dancing in there, and we want to just really show how much of fun everyone was having. And so when you're, when you're walking around a re reception and you're capturing all this fun stuff, this is things that need to go in your album as well. And again, these images here are not just for the album. If you give these images to the DJ, the DJ is then going to use those images to promote hey, I can keep your dance floor packed. People have fun when I'm your DJ. And so all aspects of the day, there's ways you can use these images other than selling them to your bride and groom. And then, of course, the exit. Um, we want to capture that one kind of wow exit shot just to show um, now we're wrapping up this album. And so that's one album. And so I'll walk briefly through one more album just to kind of show you uh, how this is done in a different setting. But I won't spend as much time on it. We'll just kind of flip through it briefly. 
And so again, this one's still in proof state. Um, I still haven't designed their logo and monogram and everything to go on that left-hand side of the uh, left page. But uh, once we get that designed, that will be part of the, um, part of the um, album as well. So uh, again, start with kind of a wow image, you know, something that has a little bit of drama to it, a little bit of emotion, um, whatever kind of fits the feel of their album. This couple was very fashion oriented, so they wanted everything to look like it was magazine uh, quality. So throughout the day, you'll notice it, looked, it looks very um, fashion-esque throughout the day. Uh, but we start with that one wow image, and then as we flip through the album, um, again, it follows that same formula throughout the day. We start with bride's details, we photograph all the details, and then we go into bride getting dressed, or wedding party getting dressed, bride getting dressed. But look at the consistency, and, and keep in mind the consistency throughout the day with both you know, composition, white balance, the color, um, everything that we're doing is consistent throughout the day. The lighting is consistent. And that's what we don't see a lot of photographers do. They, they focus on what they're good at or what they enjoy about the day. But the rest of the day, they just are just like, okay, I'm here to take pictures and I'm not really here to do anything. I'm, I want to either create the really dramatic epic shots or I want to create the Pinterest style, you know, light and airy romantic shots, but they're not really consistent throughout the whole day. And so throughout the day, we're just photographing all the details, telling all the little sub stories some fun time with the with the wedding party and then we transition over to the bar where the guys were getting ready now this wedding the guys were already dressed and ready and I was just going to the bar to hang out with them and capture some time with them at this bar that they all uh, know and love and they hang out at and so when I get there they're just you know kind of hanging out having drinks and so you know part of my job that day was telling the story of the relationship between all the guys and this was a pretty large wedding you know, they wanted more of that Reservoir Dogs style of look, you know, that old 20s style, which seems to be a lot of what our, our couples are booking us for is that old school black and white, you know, 20s error thing, which is funny. We're back in, in 2020 uh, and that this style is, is totally back again. But, you know, when we're going through the day, we want to still follow that same formula, you know, photograph the groom, photograph all the flowers, photograph the stories, photograph the relationship with the groom and the groomsmen, the bride with the bridesmaids. Um, and then just pull everything out into spreads. And then again, we're transitioning into the um, reception uh, and cere ceremony and reception. So we want to be able to uh, showcase the venue. And a lot of this is just showcasing the venue. You know, our couples choose venues because they like it for a certain reason. And this couple, even though they were very fashion oriented, they they love the, the rustic barn nature of this venue. And so um, I wanted to be able to capture that by photographing the, you know, the weather vane and the old grain silo and the horses and the cows and things that were there. Um, it's all part of their story. And then we move into the first look, um, you know, the first time that, that the bride and groom saw each other. And then we're transitioning into the ceremony with all the ceremony details. Now we're in the ceremony. We have several spreads of just the ceremony itself. And again, you know, we like to tell everyone to kiss at the end of the aisle. It's a little bit formulaic, but, you know, our couples always love that image, you know, regardless of whether it's an indoor wedding or an outdoor wedding or what, they always seem to love this image. And then we go into more, you know, creative time with our couples. And so we, we vary. We will transition between the dramatic uh, style, off-camera lighting, to a little bit more of natural light, uh, light and airy. But again, you know, the style is pretty consistent throughout the wedding. And perfect uh, example of photographing all the details leading into the reception. Images like this are perfect for your for your vendors to be able to use for their advertising. And again, first dances, just capturing all the emotion, all the fun there. And then into open dancing, so we capture everybody just kind of having fun. We've got the toast in this one. And one little secret that I will tell you is sometimes when you're photographing uh, a toast, 
You try to always want to have your toasters looking at your couple or facing toward them in a spread, but that's not always the way it is. Sometimes you get an amazing shot, but they happen to be looking camera right. Um, and so you can go into Photoshop and flip that canvas so that now they're looking camera left if your couple is on the left-hand side of the spread. Um, I do that uh, quite often, actually, and no one ever catches it. So uh, just a little secret there. Then we go into the cake cutting, open dancing, a little bit more of that story being told, and then the sparkler exit. All right, guys, that was uh, a couple of wedding albums and how I approach a wedding day uh, and why I approach it like that. I hope that this has been helpful for you, and I hope that it helps increase both sales and referrals for your business. And if you have any questions, always feel free to reach out to me or Lori at any time. Thanks a lot, and we hope to see you next time uh, on the next issue of Shutter Magazine.